Hi friends, today we are going to see about civil service examination which is conducted by UPSC and my name is Chalo Durai. This is a picture of me. I did my BE ECE from PC Tech Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu and ME Medical Electronics from University Gindi campus. During 2012, I started to prepare for civil service examination. So I joined in a coaching center uh, named Ganesh IAS Academy in Ananagar. And they charged me around 30 to 35,000 for the preparation, for the exam, for exam preparation, except the optional papers. And again, I joined in Rao's IAS Academy in New Delhi from 2013 to 2014 in weekend batches. Again, I got trained uh, training from them. Uh, so it was the course fee was around one lakh. So this course fee, uh, it's it does not include the optional papers. It was around one lakh. Uh, so I I prepared. I did my best level, but until now I was not able to crack it. But during the preparation for civil service examinations, I thought the quality education must not teach only those people who are uh, having money in the top level of the society but also all section of the people in an affordable manner so by the grace of my lord and savior who had died for my sin who have changed my life by changing my sinful and corrupt characters i started this online academy so that all the section of the people will have a quality education in an affordable manner Okay, let us see about UPSC. What is UPSC and what is civil service examinations? So whenever we ask a student or in, whenever they ask me initially, I used to say I'm preparing for UPSC exam. But that's not the right answer. Uh, UPSC is a commission which conduct different kind of exams. So in that civil service is an, one of the exam. So if someone is asking what they're preparing, we must say, I am preparing for civil service examination conducted by UPSC. So UPSC con consists of 11 members. Out of 11, one acts as a chairman. His name is, present chairman name is Arvind Zaxina. They are appointed by the president of India. Now let us see what is the role of the UPSC. UPSC is a central recruiting agent. A recruiting agency means those will be selecting the right candidate for the right job. So their purpose is they will be selecting the right candidate for group A, group B for all India services and central level services. Okay, let us see what is the difference between all India service and central level central services. Central services are services which is directly and fully controlled by central government. But in all India services, these services are controlled by both central and state government. So there are only three all India services. One is IAS and another is IPS and another one is Indian Forest Service. So the ultimate control of all these people will be by central government they are the one who will be selecting them they are the one who will be training them and they are the one who will be deputing them to the state based on the central government decisions so the ultimate control lies in central government but the immediate control lies in the state government so what does the state government does for example we know about joint secretary who is an IAS officer or IPS officers, we have seen DSP, SPs. So the state government will ask them to do the daily task. So the state government will give the daily task to those people. But the disciplinary actions, mostly the dis disciplinary actions against them will be taken by the central government. So whenever the central government requires them, they will ask them to come back from the state government and work in central government. After finishing the task, again, they will deputy them into the respective state government. So the salary and the pensions are given by the state government. 
so because of this the constitution visualized them as a watchdog of the merit system so these are the different kind of examinations conducted by upsc uh, like in engineering engineering service combined geoscientist service cds examination cisf examination civil service examination in the forest service examination indian economic service and it goes on so in that civil service examination is one among them okay let us see what are the different stages in civil service examination uh, there are two stages in civil service examination stage 1 contain pre preliminary examination which contain two papers paper 1 and paper 2 stage 2 contain main examination uh, which includes written as well as interview so the total mark is for main examination is around 2025 marks okay let us see what is prelim preliminary examination what are the things which is required for the preliminary examination paper 1 in the preliminary examination is very important and based on this mark only they will shortlist the candidate whether they can write the main examination or not so this mark is very very important and the maximum mark for this paper is 200 marks and the maximum duration is 2 hours uh, it also have negative marking it is around one third of the mark that is allotted to that question that is for example if the two marks is allotted for the question and one third of the two marks is around 0.667 approximately marks will be detected if you mark a wrong answer so after the finishing of the uh, paper 1 examination if you cross check and if you found that will be getting around 115 to 125 marks i believe that is enough to qualify for the main examination you can be happy and you can prepare well for the main examination uh, and this examination is not a descriptive one and it's an objective one descriptive one means we'll be writing the answer objective one means we'll be just taking choosing the right answer which is given out of four we'll be choosing one right answer Okay, let us see the qualifying marks for 2018. 2018 was one of the toughest question paper UPSC have ever given to the student. Let us see what are the marks for different category of the people. So the qualifying marks for OC category was around 98. For OBC, it was around 96.66. For SC, it is around 84. For ST, it is around 83.34. If If some people have got above these marks, they would have been called to write the main examination. So this paper is nothing but a a a paper which qualifies whether you are eligible to write the main examination or not. So these marks won't be included in the final overall mark marks which is given by the UPSC exam. so what are the subjects that we must know to crack the preliminary examination the first important subject polity history geography economy science and technology environment and ecology if you are having if you have a basic strong foundation in all these six subjects most probably will have a chance to crack the upsc and finally i have written current affairs current affair means what are the incident which is happening every day every day incidents they will be writing in newspapers they will be coming in videos uh, through tvs so based on this they'll be asking a lot of questions to understand the current affairs very clearly you must know the basic concept of of above six subjects you must have a very clear concepts or ba very strong basic concepts from the above six subjects 
So this is a sample question from 2019 prelims. Oh, this is a question which came in the news between 2018 to 2019, uh, May to. So with reference to Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, consider the following statement. AIIB has more than 80 member state nation. India is the largest shareholder in AIIB. AIIB does not have any members from outside Asia. So Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank might have come in the news between the year May 2018 to May 2019. So based on this, they, it might have come a small uh, a news about AIIB in the newspaper. But what the UPSC wants from the UPSC aspirant is even it's a small thing, they must have a clear knowledge about what is AIIB, who are the members of AIIB, whether India is a part of AIIB, and whether any European or other Asian uh, other nations are part of AIIB or only Asian nations are part of AIIB. From this question, you can clearly understand. So those who are having a clear knowledge about AIIB can only answer this question correctly so randomly we can't answer it so it is not like a regular exam preparation for our degree exam where we can even prepare one or two days before and write the exam so to crack this exam at least every day you want to prepare six to eight hours every day for at least six to eight months consistently if that's the case then you have a chance of cracking the upsc so this is from current affairs let us see another question with the reference to the constitution of india consider the following statement no high court shall have the jurisdiction to declare any central law to be constitutionally invalid an amendment to the constitution of india cannot be called into question by the supreme court of india so what is it says is they are asking whether the statement is right or wrong. So in the first statement, what they are saying is, if a central government is making any law, whether the high court in any state government can declare it as invalid based on the constitution. And second thing is, the central government is making amendment in the constitution of India, whether the Supreme Court, court can question it. So to write this answer clearly, you must have a very strong foundation, very basic knowledge about politics and about the Indian constitution. So you must have a very clear knowledge about all these things. So based on this, you want to choose whether one only is right or two only is right or both one and two is right or both one and two is wrong. So to clear paper one, you must have a very strong found basic foundation. They are not asking an high level foundation knowledge, but they are asking a, a very basic foundation and all those six subjects is required. So if you want to crack the UPSC, you must have a strong basic foundation to crack the UPSC exam. Now let us see about paper two. Paper 2 also ma contain a maximum marks of 200 and a duration of uh, 2 hours and it to have a negative marking of one third of the marks allotted to it. This is only a qualifying paper and you must get around 66 out of 200. If you do not get 66, you are not qualified for UPSC even though you get 200 out of 200 in paper 1. So before three or four years, paper one mark and paper two mark were added to select a candidate to write for the main examination. But due to some problems, they said paper two is needed, but let it be a qualifying paper because some of the uh, uh, people from in the states, they were not able to uh, crack the English comprehension, comprehensions 
and uh, like aptitude some of the students from arts they were unable to crack it but the students from engineering background are able to crack it so they changed paper 2 to be an qu- qualifying paper so even if you get 200 out of 200 you must get minimum 66 marks out of 200 to qualify for main examination so the, what are the subjects to be known to qualify this paper to is basic math max reasoning analytical ability and basic english languages so all these things are required for you to crack paper 2 see these are the sample questions from 2019 prelims you can go through the uh, website so let us see how many members will be uh, shortlisted for main examination let us see how many members will be shortlisted for example if the upsc is publishing that we need only 1000 members for civil service so how many members will be shortlisted is they will be shortlisting around 12 to 13 uh, around 12 to 13000 for main examination so for ex- and uh, la- la- last year the people who applied for upsc uh, prelims examination was around 8 lakhs so from 8 lakhs they will be shortlisting around 12000 to 13000 people for main examination and again for main examination they will be shortlisting around 3000 members for interview from again from 3000 they will be shortlisting 1000 member for civil service examinations so in this 13000 the proportions will be given for oc like oc people must have this n- uh, number of uh, uh, members uh, obc this number of students sc st this number of students so they will have in proportions out of 3300 for different category of people so let us see the age limit and the number of attempts so upsc is saying that if you want to attend upsc civil service examination at least you must have attained 21 years of age so the maximum age varies for different category for oc the maximum number of attempts they can make is six attempts till the age of 31 so between the age of 21 to 31 they can given maximum of six attempts in that within six attempts they must clear for obc the maximum number of attempt is nine between the age of 21 to 34 34 they can write or on nine attempts and similarly for sc st the maximum age is 36 so from the beginning from the age of 21 to 36 they can write any number of attempts it is not number of uh, like like 6 or 9 from the age of 21 to uh, 36 they can write any number of attempts uh, like obc sc st age relaxation is also given to defense service personals ex service persons people with disability like uh, low vision acid victims leprosy affected people uh, leprosy affected and recovered persons for this kind of peoples all pers- people is also they are given age relaxations please refer the U- upsc notifications now let us see about the main examination main examination is very important because based on this examination only based on this marks only you will be getting you will they will be shortlisting for interview and based on the overall marks of written plus interview they will be giving you post based on your marks only so prelim marks does not counted will not be counted for the overall marks preliminary examination is to select the right candidate who can write the main examination so let us see about main examination in s- i'm not going in elaborate manner but in brief i like to explain it so 
so main examination uh, qualifying papers on the papers for which marks will be counted so they are dividing the categories so qualifying papers is like they are having two papers that is paper a and the paper b paper a contain 300 marks and for three hour durations so one of the indian language you must select from the eighth schedule of the constitution in the eighth schedule of the constitution there are many indian languages out of that one indian language you must select and you must write it so the minimum for example if i am from tamil nadu so i must select i can select tamil and the minimum marks i must get is 75 marks out of 300 so i must get at least 75 marks to qualify similarly paper b also contain maximum of 300 marks and three hours duration and the minimum mark required to qualify paper b is 75 marks and it is based on english language so the paper a is based on indian language and paper b is based on english language so in this two paper you must get a minimum of 75 marks to qualify so these are the various languages and scripts you can write and this is the thing which i got from the upsc notification you can refer upsc notifications if you do not qualify paper a and paper b they won't correct these papers these papers are the papers for which marks will be counted if you do not qualify paper a or paper b if you do not qualify any paper any one of the paper in paper a or b or both they won't correct paper all these papers from paper 1 to paper 7 which are very important because these are the paper for which marks will be counted so there are in this also there are two kind of papers one is common paper which is common to all the uh, people and another is optional paper so paper 1 to 5 is a common paper where all the people will be having a same question and paper 6 and 7 is an optional paper where i can choose either an electrical engineering or geography or history based on my preferences so let us see about paper 1 paper 1 is for 250 marks and 3 hours duration Uh, so it is based on essay writing they will be checking how you are able to understand the things clearly and how you are able to present the things very clearly so essay writing plays a very important role because it contain 250 marks so they have two sections section a it they will have four questions and section b they will have four questions so out of section a you must select in section a you must select one question out of four similarly in section b you must select one question out of four so you must write two question each question carries 125 marks so the maximum marks it is around 250 marks so paper 2 paper 2 is about general studies 1 so it contain 20 questions question 1 to 10 have 10 marks and 11 to 20 has 15 marks for each questions and they are also having world limits so for question 1 to 10 only 150 words are allowed you must not write more than 150 words if they are saying 150 words means you must adder to 150 words only you must can you can write less than 150 words but please do not write more than 150 words again from page paper 11 to 20 they have said up to the maximum of 250 words you can write so please try to write up to the maximum of 250 don't go beyond 250 words so for this paper the maximum mark is 250 marks so what are the from where the questions are taken from general studies 1 if you see the questions are taken from indian heritage and culture history and geography of the world and society so you must have a very clear knowledge about the uh, culture history and geography if you prepare well for the prelims very clearly you can 
with that foundation we can write the answers very clearly for mains examinations also so based on the current uh, affairs they will be asking all this questions paper 3 also similar to this let us see what are the subject required for paper 3 so for paper 3 you you, you, you you must have a proper understanding on governance, constitution, polity, social justice and international relationship. So if you have a clear knowledge on polity and constitution, you can write about all these things in a much easier manner. If you know the constitution of polity very clearly, you can understand the governance, social justice and international relationship very easily based on the current affairs and daily today activities so paper 4 also contain 50 marks so what are the subjects or what are the things which is required for paper 4 let us see so here they are speaking about we want to know about the technology a new trend in technology and how it is benefiting India and what are the economic issues and what are the economic development we can make and re regarding biodiversity, regarding environment, regarding security and disaster management. So if you have a proper knowledge on economic subjects and environment, you, you can understand from the security, disaster management, technology, biodiversity in a much clear, simple and clear manner. So you must have a good knowledge on economic, environment and technology. If you know this concept very clearly, you can understand the rest of the things in much better manner. So general uh, paper 5 is about ethics. So they will be asking you the questions like how will we give in the situation. If they are asking if they are trying to kill you, whether you will be saying all the truth to the Pakistani soldier or not. So based they will like, give an ethics whether you will take the bribe or not in that particular situation. If you are working as an IAS officer, if some pressure is coming from the politics to sanction a particular order and to take bribe, whether you will take bribe or not, or what you will do. So these are things which comes in ethics. And finally it's about optional paper. So optional paper you can select uh, any one of the optional papers. So these are the different kind of op optional papers right from agriculture to one of the Indian language also you can take Tamil also you can take Telugu also you can take any language or uh, any subject which is given in the UPSC notifications. So after completion of the main examination, they will be calling you for interview. For interview, they will be giving around 275 marks. So the overall marks will be around 2025 marks. So 1750 for main examination and remaining 275 marks for interview. So these are various posts. If you are uh, come in the thousand, you can be in one among the services. If you come within hundred rank, you can select IAS or IPS. If you go beyond that, the the service which you will be getting will be coming down the list. Okay, thank you so much. Have a nice day.